It happens quite often that I'm browsing a Facebook group or a subreddit about my favorite trading card games when someone suddenly posts a picture of a stash of cards that they found from their childhood, wondering if maybe any of these hold any value. Now, in most cases, a lot of them will be disappointed, but sometimes you actually do find some hidden gems amongst them. But how do you know exactly? Well, today I'm gonna teach you how to find out what the value of your Yu-Gi-Oh cards are. Now before we put a price tag on a card, let's first find out what card it is that we're actually dealing with. For this, I have here with me three Dark Magician cards. Now, Dark Magician is a very popular and known monster in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, of course, and also it is the main deck that I run, so these cards were honestly the easiest and the best way to give you all the prime examples. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience or knowledge about Yu-Gi-Oh!, then all three of these may look like the exact same card to you, but that's where you'll be wrong. As a matter of fact, all three of these cards are different. And the best way of figuring out what card we're dealing with is by having a look at the set number. Now for Yu-Gi-Oh! that is actually very very simple, because the set number will always be printed at the bottom right corner underneath the artwork of the card. So in this case we read YGLD-ENCO9. Now the first three or four letters in front of the dash will refer to the actual set the card is from. Now in the case of this card, the YGLD stands for Yugi Legendary Dex. Now we can already presume with that info that it's gonna come from a collection box most likely with a couple of cards or decks that Yugi played throughout the anime. And that is exactly what it is. Then we have the ENCO9 on this card, and we can split that one up in three groups. We've got EN standing for English because it's an English print, which on its own is very obvious. Then the C is a bit of an, uh, of an ordinary one, because that's something that you very often won't see, because the C in this case just stands for DEC C. You see, the card that this one came from was a collection box, like we mentioned, where there were three certain decks that Yuki used throughout the anime. Now, this Dark Magician in particular, he came from Dexy or the third deck. And then, of course, we have the 09, which very simply stands for the number of the card in that particular deck. So this one would be the ninth card from that set or that deck. So now that we know what set the card came from, the next important thing is the addition. With Yu-Gi-Oh! we've got three different examples, and I have them here with me. We have the first edition, which speaks for itself, meaning that this is the first print of this run, of this deck, of this set, you name it. Then we have limited edition, which usually means that it's a promo card or something like that. And now we've got unlimited. Unlimited is everything after the first edition that gets a reprint. And these are also the most common ones in most cases. However, there is one small detail that I should mention when it comes to the stamp of a first or limited edition card, and that is the position. Because for some reason over the years they decide to switch it. If for instance we have a look at this card, we can see that the first edition stamp is underneath the left corner of the artwork, quite on the opposite side of the serial number that we saw earlier. However, if we have a look at this card, the first edition stamp is now at the bottom of the card. Now the same can be said about the limited edition card here for instance, the one at the bottom you can read it right there whilst this one still has it in the corner, like mentioned before. So yeah, do do keep that in mind, because it can be quite important indeed. Now whilst doing your research on figuring out what set the card came from, you've probably came across a couple of websites as well that probably also gave you a rough estimate of what they go for. And perhaps you came across one thinking, oh, this card is worth a lot of money. But that's not necessarily true. You see, there is a lot of websites out there and not all of them are that very trustworthy. With that, I mean that some websites may give you a higher price than what you can actually get for a card. Now, the two most famous and trustworthy websites would be TCG Player and Card Market. Now, the two websites are basically the same as you can buy and sell cards in single cards there and they will give you the best estimate price of your card as well. Now the only difference between them would be the region. If for instance you're living in America, then TCG player is for you. If however, like me, you're European, then you should go to card market. However, in general, the prices are basically the same for the two, but there is one very important thing at stake. And if you've looked through some of these websites, you might have noticed that. That would be the rarity as well as the condition of a card. So when you hear the word rarity, I know what you're thinking. I've got this hollow card here and a non-hollow. Well, definitely the hollow is going to be worth more, right? 
Well, not necessarily. And in some small cases, the non-hollow will actually get you more than the hollow version. And this is because of reasons such as reprints and all of that. But that's something we'll cover in a moment. Now, as you can see, I've expanded the board from three cards to six to show you a couple of the rarities in Yu-Gi-Oh! And trust me, this is not even half of it, of all the rarities, because there is a lot in this TCG. But these are the most common ones. And speaking of common, that's the first one we'll have a look at. I have here with me a common dark magician. Now, as the name suggests, common cards, you're going to get a lot of these. These are the most, most printed cards. That's why they're commons after all. And as you can see, there is nothing special about this one. There's, there's no shine to it. It's just, just a piece of cardboard. And yeah, they don't really hold any value. They will go for like two to five cents, perhaps, or maybe 10, but don't expect too much more for that unless it's a card that is sought after and played often, but then usually it will be a higher rarity. Moving on to the actual first rare card, and that is also the name of this one, a rare. Rare cards are identified by very simply looking at the name and seeing that it has a silver shine to it. So there is the first hollow, and you can see that Illusion Magic is printed in this silver font, so it reflects on the light. However, the rest of the card is still like a common. There is nothing else shiny, just the name being printed in silver. Sometimes in different colors as well, but uh, usually it will be in silver. Moving on to a super rare card, and here it's kind of the opposite of a rare. We have the artwork itself that is hollow, but the name is not. So the name is just printed like a common one would be, but the artwork, however, is holographic. Just look at that. You can tell by the, uh, the light reflecting on it, has a nice shine to it, so this is a super rare. Then we move on to ultra rares, and that's where the two kind of combine. With What I mean with that is that both the name and the artwork are no hollow. So in this case, the name will be printed most likely in a gold name instead of the silver. And again, the artwork indeed is also a nice hollow. And uh, there you can see it clearly with all the light reflecting on it. So um, there you go. This is a ultra rare those four are probably the most common ones um however there's a couple of different examples as well and i have two here with the dot magician girls the first one being a golden rare and yeah this one kind of speaks for itself like all the corners all the edges of this card are printed in gold instead of the usual darkish gray of Yu-Gi-Oh cards um also depending on what card it is like usually with gold cards the artwork and everything is hollow as well but that doesn't necessarily mean that it holds any value though so these are very common in the sense of sometimes they will print uh, a certain anniversary set so to speak and just a couple of very iconic monsters will get like a golden overhaul and again depending on playability and reprints it doesn't mean that they are worth something necessarily, but that is something that we'll cover in a moment again. Then we have the last one here that I have with me, and this is a secret rare card. Now the secret rares can be kind of, well, it's pretty hard to pick up on camera. And yeah, it's a bit hard to say. Uh, again, this one, for instance, is a limited edition. So we already know it's a promo card and promo cards are usually bound to have a secret rare print. Now the exception with these, if you can take it out of the first sleeve, I don't know if it will really show you, but you can see that there is a bit of lining. There's like a um, square pattern sort of going on on the card. Now if we compare that, for instance, to a, uh, a super air card, you will see that that is not the case on these. So I, yeah, you can, you can see what I mean. There is a sort of pattern going on with the secret rare and also the name will be printed in, uh, in silver most likely. So there is a, a small difference between those two. So, um, yeah, like I said, those are very, very, well, secret rares can be found usually as a promo card, but in certain sets, most sets will have a couple of secret rares that will be either the first or the last card in the set. And they actually do hold some value because they're pretty hard to pull after all. With the websites that I've mentioned earlier being TCG player and card market, you will always find a guide on these websites to what they consider the guidelines should be to the condition of a card. And this is also something that the sellers will have to follow and not to advertise a different condition of the card that you as a, as a buyer will receive. Because yeah, like I said, 
it can change the difference in money very, very quickly. So I have here, however, four different ones. Uh, certain websites will offer a couple of variants in between, but these are the four most common ones. And that will be mint or near mint, lightly played, moderately played, and heavily played cards. Now, yeah, this dark magician here, this, for instance, is a near mint card or a mint. It's, it's pack fresh, put straight in a sleeve. Um, also, yeah, if you do wonder, what's so important is about sleeves and, and how to keep your cults in a good condition. I made a different video on that a long time ago, so you can go check that out. But uh, yeah, here you can see that there is basically, well, we've got some scuff marks here, but that's on the sleeve or just some dirt. But you can see that there is nothing wrong with this one. There is no scratches or anything on the surface of this card. So this one right here is definitely near mint and it's as clean as it could be when I came and got it out of the pack. Moving on to a lightly played card, then we have this Dark Magician. Now, I will get this one out for a moment to give you a bit of a better look. This card is a lightly played card, which means that this one will have a couple of small imperfections here and there. For instance, one very notorious one would be that, uh, that small stain, that small dot there underneath the end. So that right there is like a little little stain or something. Also the surface of the card, and I got hollows here with me because it's a lot more obvious to see with hollow cards. You will see that there are some scratches on the surface of the card itself. But in general, you know, it's still a very nice conditioned card, like the back as well. Small little uh, white spot there in the middle. But other than that, you know, very small amount of whitening, for instance, on the edges or, or edge wear. Very, very minor. So definitely a lightly played card, but not near mint just because of those scratches, that, that, that small stain, even those small things can make the difference between near mint and a lightly played card. Moving on, however, to moderately played cards, and then it gets a lot more obvious. So of course the condition will only decrease from this point. And here we can see at first glance, still, at first glance, nice condition card. You know, you will see that there is a couple of uh, scuff marks, for instance, here. If you can pick that up properly, yeah. A lot more scratches on the surface as well. You can clearly see that, I hope. A lot more uh, scratching here as well. Try to put it on, on the camera as best as I can with all the light reflecting on it. That's why I go with hollows after all. That will be a lot more obvious. But yeah, you can definitely see like... Uh, scratches all around but the most notorious thing of course would be the corners so here you can definitely see there is a small crease on this corner this one is just uh, pretty beaten up here the, uh, the the card itself starts slowly peeling as well you know and this one is also very bad in condition um, yeah and the back you can see a lot more scuff marks there a lot more dirt on the on the black part of the card so for instance this is on first glance, still an okay card, but definitely, definitely not a lightly played card, let alone a near mint card. So I'm giving you all these as examples because I do see people posting stuff like this as a near mint card. And let me tell you, they are not, but they will ask the price for them. I actually made a video not too long ago about different auctions. People ask a lot of money for not knowing what the value of the cards is. And if you don't want to end up in a video like this, then this is why I made that video, you know, because... I don't want any of you to end up in the, in that video where I will make fun of you, because that's what I do. Um, anyway, moving on to the last example, I've got this Dark Magician here from the very, very first uh, Yu-Gi-Oh deck ever released, Side Deck Yugi, also a first edition, but yeah, this one is very beaten up. You can see that the hollow, it even has like a, a, a small depression there, something put pressure in there, like a ballpoint perhaps. Um, the hollow itself is just scuffed all over, like peeling off the corners are very very badly damaged stuff like that you see there are small dark dots all over the card stuff like that and uh, yeah the back as well like here the corner is just gone you can see the white you can see the, the the foil that's part of the foil that's actually peeling off you can peel this card off if you like like a sort of sticker so uh, this one definitely heavy plate and then i have uh, another one here with me um, which is the same as this one, but this one is also a heavy played card in the sense that this one has a major crease at the back. So even if this card, the rest of it was near mint, this major crease makes it heavy played. So 
do be careful and that's why sleeving and protecting your cards is so damn important yeah of course this one also has like a lot of aura damage but just to give you an idea that crease there even if the card was perfect for the rest that crease makes the value go nowhere so very important to keep in mind So there was two more things that I want to talk with you about when it comes to evaluating your cards and that, like I've mentioned before, are reprints and playability of a card. Now, if we have a look at all of these Dark Magicians here, for instance, the most of which we have seen throughout this video, but if we, with everything that we've covered so far, we can tell that there is so much difference between them and there is only like one or two cards that are the exact same, everything else is basically a different card. If we see all of this and we can think, well, we've got a common card here, which like we know is not worth a lot. Or we have a card which is 20 years old and one of the first prints of the Dark Magician. This one, of course, is going to catch you a lot more than the common one. So if you're just in it for the game, you want to play the game. Why would you spend a lot of money for this one if you can get the very cheap alternative? However, if you're a collector like myself, then the rare cards are more interesting to you because they do hold value and you don't necessarily want to play with them. Another thing is, like I said, reprints over the years. Like I said, this one, for instance, being the starter deck Yugi, which is the second Dark Magician ever printed, because that was from the very first deck, the first Dark Magician being from Legend of Blue Eyes. This one is the first that was publicly accessible for a low price because it wasn't a starter deck. Um, so this one is over 20 years old, basically when Yu-Gi-Oh started. However, if we compare it to this one or this one, these are just a couple of years old. So even up to today, monsters like the Dark Magician or Blue Eyes, like very fan favorites, still see support. And that is why, for instance, people like me, we have an entire Dark Magician support deck. So all of these cards are all related to Dark Magician. They all have a purpose to work with him and to bring you to victory. And if you consider that the Dark Magician is over 20 years old, but some of these cards are printed maybe last year or even this year, and considering that there is still more support on its way for the Dark Magician, Blue Eyes and other monsters, that's what I find fun about Yu-Gi-Oh! Because even cards that I collected in my childhood, such as these Dark Magicians, they still have some purpose in today's game, which is something I really, really do like and they very often bring out more support for old cards that no longer maybe see play to bring them back in. Which is something that I really do like about, about Yu-Gi-Oh! card game, for instance. Now, this also brings into play the other thing that I want to mention, and that is playability. All of these cards, these are all cards for a Dark Magician deck. But if you consider that some of these cards maybe have only seen one, maybe two prints over all the years that they've been out. But they're crucial to work in a certain deck. Very crucial key cards, such as, for instance, for Dark Magician, we've got Dark Magician Sur uh, Servant and Dark Magician Soul. Two very useful and important cards to run in a Dark Magician deck. But very, very limited in print. Then basic economy comes into play where you have a high demand but low population and thus the price will increase or it will never decrease because you know people still want to use it people still want it so why would you lower the price if you can get that much for it if there is just a few of those printed in just a couple of sets which by now maybe are also out of print the price is going to increase and eventually they will get of course a reprint but sometimes this can take two three four or longer years and if it is a deck you really want to play on a competitive level and that is a card you desperately need you will have to pay for it and it's going to cost you quite a quite a bit so yeah there you go but anyway ladies and gents i hope that this video was helpful for you I hope that you've learned something. I hope that now you've got a basic concept of how Yu-Gi-Oh! and the market around it works. And you no longer have to ask people like, what is this card worth? Of course, if you're unsure, you can always still ask. But um, I hope that this video was a bit of a useful guide to you. And like I said, you know, check those websites, check card market, check uh, TCG player, check eBay, sold listings, also a very important one. If for instance, you've got very, very old school cards that you want to sell because um, card market or TCG player will not always uh, show pictures of that specific card that you will get. So if you do have a valuable card and you want to sell it, 
compare it with sold eBay listings to compare the pictures with the ones that you have uh, condition wise and all that. And that will also definitely help. So um, there you go. I hope that this uh, video was helpful, that you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. Let me know by leaving a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, of course. It really, really means a lot to me. So there you go. Thanks for watching and we will see each other in a new video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.